share his love and his mercy and all the good things of life with us. 39 blessings are mine this morning, and that is the number of folks that are, are here to worship and praise our Lord and our Savior. And I am so thankful that you came. Uh, Shirley had on here approximately 39. We were talking about that in Sunday school, and I said, let me ministerially estimate it. Uh, and uh, you know I've told you what a ministerial estimate is. It's nothing but a holy lie. Uh, it always is higher, right, Brother Jack? Always higher. Uh, but I am grateful uh, uh, for everyone who has come this morning, and especially for those that stood a while ago. Uh, men, and I'm sure women, were, would be included in our church family uh, down through the years, who have given of themselves far beyond uh, the call of duty that uh, anyone ought to have given to themselves, and yet they were faithful. And we want to talk about that this morning. I want to talk about another kind of soldier. I want us to think this morning on a passage from the second book of Timothy, Paul's writing to young Timothy. Now, Timothy, you remember, was to be Paul's for today. We would... Uh, uh, referred to as a protege. He was to follow after Paul. God had called young Timothy uh, uh, for the purpose of, of literally picking up the work and carrying on the ministry and the message that, that uh, uh, you and I uh, know today. You realize that uh, uh, we probably, our lives are probably today influenced by young Timothy and by his willingness to do what God had called him to do and what God had revealed to him through the Apostle Paul. In the second chapter of that second letter that Paul wrote to Timothy, we find these words, and I'll ask you as I read to stand, please, and uh, uh, you follow along and uh, uh, remember the words of the Lord. Paul said this, you, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Paul was saying, don't want this even to end with you, Timothy. We want to live on and on and on and on, generation after generation. Paul said to accomplish that, you, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crop. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Father, we thank you this morning that you are a God who loves us enough, that you have called men and women and boys and girls not only to be your children, but to be your faithful messengers, to share, Father, to remember, to remind people of all that you are and all that you have for them in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, I pray this morning that we would consider ourselves and we would find ourselves faithful to the task that you've given to each one of us. For, Father, we're all soldiers. We're all veterans. 
Lord, as we've committed ourselves to the army of the Lord. Now I pray, Father, you give us understanding through this passage, that you challenge us, that you cause us, Father, to think about ourselves, our own service, and to commit to you, Father, in the pathway that you call for us to go. And, Father, for everything that's accomplished, we'll give you praise and glory. For I pray it in Jesus' name and for his sake, I pray. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. The older I grow, the more I realize just how special tomorrow's day really is. I really believe with all of my heart that tomorrow ought to be one of the most sacred days of the year for us as Americans. For it will be on tomorrow that we as a country will stop to celebrate and honor the sacrifices and the service of the men and women who have given themselves in the armed forces of the United States. We'll recognize their participation. We'll recognize their part in, in one of the greatest fighting forces that's ever been assembled. Folks, we really don't, until we stop and think about it, realize how special that really is. But do you realize that none of these guys who stood this morning have ever been defeated? None of them have ever thought one second on United States soil. But they were willing to give of themselves to go and to serve wherever the Supreme Commander of the United States called on them to serve. For that, we ought to be so thankful that our hearts will rejoice to each one of them. As I was thinking about that this morning, I thought about how much we as Christians, who are in a sense veterans of another army, because the Bible describes us as the army of the Lord. And we, each one of us, have been commissioned and called to service unto our Lord. Now, not a lot of us are going to serve on foreign fields. Some of us may never put our foot outside of the United States. But nevertheless, our service, is just as necessary. Our service is just as vital as is the service and was the time that these men who have stood in our midst today have given in their, their time. We can learn a lot from them. And I just want to suggest to you two or three things this morning. And, and remembering what the Apostle Paul had to say to young Timothy. The first thing that I learned something about from them was dedication. We can never say enough this morning. Words of appreciation for the dedication that these and others have done. You know, the truth of the matter is, when the call came, when the call came, when it was issued, they dropped everything. They dropped their family relationship. They dropped their job relationship. They dropped their opportunity to make money and to make fortune in this country to answer the call that had come. Now, they may not have wanted to do that. It may not have been their desire to do that. That may not have been in their plan for their life to do that. But regardless, when the supreme commander called, when the supreme one who was in charge called, what did they do? They answered the call. And they dedicated their lives to the answer of that call. You know, we can learn something from that as Christians. Because you see, there was a call that was placed on our life one day. 
One day, God asked us, as he asked through the Apostle Paul, a young man whose name was Timothy, to drop everything, to forget about everything else that seemed important, that seemed significant, and to realize and remember that the most important thing of all was to answer the call. I do not know the situation of your life. I don't even remember all the situation of my life. But I know this. Even as men have represented to us this morning, when the time for the call comes, we must answer. I hesitate to think this morning. What would have happened? Where would we be this morning? What kind of condition would our country be in today? What kind of, uh, of living experience would we be experiencing this morning had not those who stood have been faithful to the call? They were dedicated to the call. I talked with every one of these men uh, before service this morning. And I, I was kind of amused at some of them, at, at what they had to say about when they called, how different it was, uh, how, how uh, uh, it wasn't what they expected uh, as they called. Uh, uh, one said, well, I went to the, to the YMCA, was sworn in, got on a train, went up north, came to a big uh, 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 gymnasium, was told to grab a mattress and get on the floor and go to sleep. And he said, if this is what the service is about, I don't understand that. But thank God. Thank God. Thank God that he answered the call. I wonder tonight, today, what our world would be like, what our country would be like, if we as Christians were as dedicated to the call as those who have gone, those who have served and who are now serving, even today. We can learn a lot, folks, from their dedication. If you don't understand that, just look at what they've done. Look at what they did in that moment, and you'll understand what God intends and desires for all of us to do in the moment when he says, I want and need you. I have a plan for your life, and the best plan to bless you and to bless those round about you is the plan that I've laid down for your life. Thank God, tell us, for your dedication. Thank God for that example that we as Christians can learn from, from day into day. Not only do I believe we can learn something from their dedication, I believe we can learn something from their determination. Now, I think I speak with all of them, have spoken to all of them, and I... Almost to the very one, they told me something that they didn't tell me, but I could hear from them. They told me that their call was not a popular call. Suppose if we asked them to stand up today, that every one of them would tell us that they would have rather been somewhere else. They would have rather been doing something else. Maybe they didn't wind up in the place of their dreams. Maybe they didn't wind up in the job of their choice. I remember my dad talking about his days in the Navy, what Lily did talk about. and He talked about as they got to a particular place and they were all lined up there. and uh, uh, They didn't know what to expect. And Someone asked the question, do we have any truck drivers? among us. And you guys probably know where this is going to go. And there were, he, my dad said there were four or five folks that held up their hands. And the commander looked over and said, okay, guys, you get the wheelbarrows and you'll be in charge of the wheelbarrows. Now, I'm sure they didn't think about driving the truck like that. They didn't think that that was going to be their job. That probably wasn't the job of their choice. But no matter what, no matter what the job entailed, those who went and who served from our church and others were determined to fulfill the job for which they were called. Sometimes it was dangerous. 
Sometimes it was a dreary, dreary, dreary time. Not a pleasant time. Sometimes it was very dangerous. They were in dangerous situations. I'm sure that some of them, if they were to stand here this morning, could tell us about their unpopularity in some of the places that they served. I'm sure that they could repulse our minds if they could stand here this morning and talk about what they had to go through and what they had to see from day unto day, the usual things of that day. But they were determined to stay the course. Through the hell that war often brings, they were not deterred. They might have been shot at. They might have been thrown in prison. They might have had to go to some very terrible places, but they were not deterred. They pressed on, determined not to give up nor to give in. Folks, what a lesson in leadership for us as Christians from day unto day. God calls us to days like that. There are going to be days in your call as a Christian that are going to be dangerous days. You're going to find yourself in some unpopular territory where people are not going to appreciate you, where people may spit on you, where they may turn their back on you, whatever you may find yourself in those kinds of days. You may even find yourself in those days that seem dreary. When nothing happens, when no good seems to come out of that day, you may find yourself in a day where you don't want to be, a place where you don't want to be doing what you don't want to do. Perceiving, this is not the best for me. But let me tell you the reality of it. Same reality that these guys would tell you about this morning. And that is that it's important to do what God calls us to do because that's what it takes to get the job done. Paul looked at that young man whose name was Timothy. And he said, Timothy, here's what it takes to get the job done. Here's what God expects you to be willing to do to accomplish his task on earth from day unto day. That has never changed. The reality of the Christian life is that God designs our life. We don't dictate it. We don't design it. God designs our life. And he designs a pathway that put together with hundreds and thousands of of other pathways are what it takes to get the job done. These men and others, like Will, who is in Afghanistan right now, they were willing and are willing to do whatever it takes. They were determined to see the task to the end. And that they did. And victory came and then we can learn a lot this morning from their determination. We can learn a lot this morning from their dependability. How many of you last night laid down and went to sleep? See your hands. Might have had a restless night. Let me tell you, that wasn't because you slept on a sort of mattress. Let me tell you why you could lay down and go to sleep night after night. Or better yet, let me show you. In the lives of these men and untold others who are standing and who have stood on the front line of our defense. You see, sort of has nothing to do with it. But I know with assurance that I can lay down tonight and close my eyes, and that an enemy is not going to come and bomb my house. I know that tonight, probably most likely, 
because of the dependability of our armed services. And nobody's going to come into my house, drag my family out, and murder them one by one before the remaining family members' lives. Why? Why? Because we can depend upon those who have served. All because of their efforts. We enjoy things like a good, peaceful, safe night of sleep. I could talk about a hundred other benefits that come from their dependability. But I, w I wanted you to understand how important it is to be dependable. Let me tell you why I chose that one. Because you see, one day, all of us are going to go to sleep. All of us are going to go to sleep. There's going to come a night time in all of our lives. Now, I'm not talking about the sleep in which you'll wake up in the morning and say, I'm talking about that eternal sleep. That day when you'll close your eyes on this earth, and never, ever open them up here again. You'll open them up in heaven. What a joy it is to know that I can lay down tonight or I can close my eyes then and have the peace that passes the understanding of this world. Why is that? Why is that? Let me tell you why it is. It's because a soldier in the army of the Lord was dependable to his commander in chief. He did. She did what the commander called for to do. They took time to take a little nine-year-old boy and sit him down and share with him the plan of salvation. They took time out of their busy schedule to sit down and tell me how, as a little nine-year-old boy, that I could effectively deal with all the powers of darkness in this world. They took time to tell me what it takes to have that peace. And they took me along that pathway, and they led me to the place where I found that peace. I'm thanking God this morning for the dependability of these guys who stood. But I'm rejoicing in my heart this morning for the dependability of those who stood in my stead, who stood before me, between me, and the powers of darkness and evil and hell itself, and who put up the wall so that I might know the peace that passes the understanding of the world. The peace that's explained in a little child's prayer that says this, Now I lay me down to sleep. I know, pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I know the Lord my soul will take. Let me ask you something this morning. Do you know that? There have been those that God has put in your life that are dependable in being faithful to the task that he has set before us. I want to do our invitation time a little bit differently this morning. I want to ask all of our veterans, if they don't mind, to come and just stand before you. Would you guys do that? Would y'all mind doing that this morning? Some of you may not have turned your head to see exactly who stood this morning. And I wanted you to see. But I wanted you to see more than men who laid down their physical lives. I wanted you to see this morning, and I want you to see in them, a living example of the soldier that the Savior seeks for us to be. 
I wanted you to see those who were dedicated. Those who were determined. Those who were and are dependable this morning. I want to be like these guys. I'll probably never pick up a rifle. I'll probably never sail on a Navy ship. I'll probably never go through Marine boot camp training. But I want to be like these guys. When it comes to my Christian commitment, I want to be like these guys. When the time for the soldiers is called to stand before the Lord, I want to be like these guys. I want to be as determined. I want to be as dependent. I want to be as dedicated as they have been in the service of our country. Now, I asked them all a question. Some of them looked at me kind of funny. And this is a question I ask them. When you were called to the Navy, the Army, Marines, I don't think we have any Air Force folks, do we? Coast Guard, don't want to leave anybody out. I ask them this question. When you were called in the service, did you know how to be a soldier? To the very last one of them, the answer was this. No. When they were called, they did not know how to be a soldier. Every one of them took training. Every one of them went through the basics of learning to be a soldier. And they became useful soldiers in the Army of the United States. Let me say to you this morning, as I stand before you as an example, you may not know how to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. Most of us don't when God calls us. But that's no reason not to answer the call. What if Joe Houseman had said, I don't know how to crawl through tunnels in Vietnam. What if Mac had said, I don't, know how to, I don't know how to sail a ship and you call me into the Navy. What if they had said that to the very one? Where would we be this morning? I say to you, simply because you do not know, there's no reason to answer or not answer the call. As these men stand here this morning, I know that they mean much to every single one of us. But I pray that as you look at them, as you see them in this invitation time, that you'll be inspired. Probably, maybe never to join the armed services as did they. But you'll be inspired to come and say to Jesus this morning, Jesus, I don't know anything about soldiering in your army, but I'm willing to learn. And today I'm answering your call. Today I'm putting myself in your trainer's hands, which is the Holy Spirit. Today, today I begin to serve you. As we stand together, I'm going to ask these guys, if they'll just stand here, please, as an inspiration to you, as a reminder of you, as to what can happen if you are willing to come and answer the call today. The call is out. The call is out today for you and for me where we answer the call. Whether we know how to do it or not, we probably don't where we answer that call today. Kenneth, come and lead us as we, as we sing. Page 300. Page 300. We're down here. Without him I could do nothing. With 
without him I truly fail without him I would be drifting like a ship without a sail Jesus oh Jesus us. Do you know him today? Do not turn him away. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I would be. Without him, I could be dying.